Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Ray Diaz. I'm one of the TFs for Computer Science E1. Here we're set up to show you how to upgrade your PC by either adding a second hard drive or just replacing your hard drive outright. Now why would you want to do that? Well, it's hard to tell here looking at this beige box, but this PC isn't uh, that old. It's only a couple of years old, but it only came with 20 gigabytes of uh, disk space. These days, what with uh, digital music, downloading movies, playing video games, 20 gigs isn't a whole lot of disk space to, to play around with. Uh, so you might want to eke out a bit more mileage from your computer by adding a second hard drive and uh, just uh, keeping it going. Uh, particularly, for example, audio files who just download dozens and dozens of songs a, a month, adding a second hard drive would be a great way to keep yourself from having to plunk in a lot more money for a whole new computer. So I'm going to show you on this PC the Windows Disk Management System. Uh, you can get there by opening up Windows Explorer, right-clicking on my computer and selecting Manage. And if you select Disk Management, you can see here I've got one hard drive, slightly a little bit less than 20 gigs of space. Um, after we add a second physical drive, we'll come back to this and you'll see how uh, it's changed. But for now, I'm going to shut off the PC, open it up, and we'll take a look at the insides. Now, as this is shutting down, I'd like to mention that safety purists would say, uh, whenever you're working with the internals of a computer, it's best to use a, an anti-static wrist strap so that you're grounded. Um, that's our official recommendation in E1 as well. However, always having that wrist strap isn't uh, necessarily convenient. So while this is shutting down, I'll take off the front cover as well. On this particular model, it's just as simple as undoing the thumb screws and sliding off the cover just so. Always unplug your computer before touching anything inside, and it's a good idea to ground yourself by touching the power supply. Here inside, connected to the motherboard, is this piece of IDE ribbon that goes from the motherboard to the back of the hard drive. Let me take off the front bezel as well and you'll be able to see at least the front of the hard drive, which is right here. Again, this model um, is going to be a little bit different from other models. Um, in other videos, we showed you uh, the anatomy of a PC with uh, an IBM. But in spirit, they're uh, all pretty much the same. So as you can see from this angle, our hard drive is right here. It's connected with this IDE ribbon in the back here and with the power cord right here. Unfortunately, this particular IDE ribbon has only one connector and can only support one hard drive. So sometimes what you need to do is get a second IDE ribbon, a replacement IDE ribbon that has two connectors to support multiple hard drives. So I'm just going to pull this straight up and replace it with this unit. I'm going to reconnect the primary hard drive. And get my secondary uh, IDE drive re ready. Uh, this particular model of computer uh, accommodates a second drive just by sliding it into the front where it snaps right in. I can then connect my second drive
to the motherboard with the IDE ribbon and to the power with the multicolored cord. And there you have it. Now what I have here is a second IDE hard drive. Um, you can see here that the, the uh, connector is arranged just so, uh, which makes it different from other types of hard drives such as uh, SATA or perhaps uh, SCSI like this one is. It's important to know what kind of uh, hard drive your uh, computer wants. Uh, you can always check that by checking either the manual or opening it up and taking a look inside, seeing what kind of uh, connectors you have. I'm going to plug it back in. And before I turn, uh, put the cover back on, I'm just going to turn this on. And just to verify that I've plugged everything in tightly and secured everything the way it's supposed to go, I'm going to watch the computer post and make sure it comes up cleanly. Uh, it, should anything go wrong, usually what uh, the mistake is, is setting jumper settings on your hard drive, and I'll show you those in a moment. But here, the post detected that I do have two hard drives installed, the original 20 gigabyte drive and an additional 10 gigabyte drive on which I might put uh, digital media, songs, uh, games, uh, photos, whatever. And this particular uh, model of machine wants me to hit F1 to save the configuration changes in the BIOS. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F1 and in just a moment boot back into Windows. So while, while we're waiting for Windows to come up, here on this other hard drive you can see this little plastic tab here connected to these tiny little pins. This is an example of a jumper. If I turn this sideways, you can see labeled here the jumper settings, master, slave, and cable select. If this jumper were set to master, this hard drive would then expect to be the primary hard drive uh, if there were more than one. By setting it to slave, it would expect to be the secondary or tertiary or however many hard drives there were. With the cable select uh, jumper setting, uh, what's supposed to happen is the drives are supposed to negotiate based on their placement on the IDE ribbon. I'm just going to log into Windows here. And then when we go back to the disk management console, we'll see a few changes. Already in Windows Explorer, you can see that there are a couple of extra disks showing up. If I right-click my computer, go back to Manage, and Disk Management, you'll see here that a second physical disk with two partitions, this disk happened to be already partitioned, are showing up in my Disk Management. I can repartition these into one big disk, but for now uh, we just wanted to have uh, two uh, separate drives to add to the machine for storing our stuff and just increasing the capacity in general. If I wanted to uh, erase these for whatever reason, I could do so merely by right-clicking and deleting the drive. And again, right-clicking and deleting the partition.
I can create this new larger partition by right clicking and selecting new partition and the new partition wizard comes up. I'll just follow the wizard, use up the entire disk space. We'll do quick format. And in just a few moments, we'll have a brand new larger disk. And there we go.